from the John DeVita Broadcast Center. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack O'Lantern FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich. So sit back and enjoy Paranormal Radio with the king of Paranormal Radio, Mr. Bob Trisek. Thank you, John. Thanks very much. Um, uh, king of Paranormal Radio, I was just in Target today before I came here. I stopped at the, at the mall there because I got here very early. I had some shopping to do anyway, and there was a, a, a shirt there, a T-shirt that said, I just can't wait to be king. You know, from the Lion King, I thought I should buy this, and I thought, nah, I don't think I got too big of an ego. But uh, <laughs> King of Paranormal, it's it's actually starting to catch on. We're actually doing very well. Um, thank you all for tuning in and listening. Um, Halloween season here, we're just a couple of days away. We actually take the show on the 29th, uh, so you'll be hearing it though on Jack O'Lantern FM. You'll be hearing it on Jack 89.7 on Halloween. They're going to air the broadcast, and then also too within a day or two, our producer John Shikanda will also air the sh- uh, put the shows up on YouTube, and you can also hear on the Windy City Network www.windycityhometown.com. Okay, hope everyone is having a wonderful Halloween season. We just have a couple people to thank here. Um, I would like to thank Miss Kelly White. She's the, uh, I guess she's somewhat of a freelance writer. She writes for a few of the local newspapers out where I live, out in Elsip and the Evergreen Park area, and I think she did a real nice story on me when I was doing one of my presentations um, the week before last at the Evergreen Park Library there, and um, she put that in a couple of papers. It's in the Reporter, and it's also in the Des Plaines Valley paper. So thank you very much for that. That was a very nice story. Um, she actually put my picture in there. Wow. Holy cow. So, yeah, so it, it was kind of nice. Yeah, so thank you very much for doing that. Also, to the um, nice people over at Midnight Terror. Uh, it's been a nice season with you folks there. Very nice bunch of people to work with. If you listen to last month's show, uh, we had a couple of the girls come out, Jasmine and the other young lady, they came out and they talked about Midnight Terror, the haunted house over there on 111th Street there, right across from the Holy Sepulchre Cemetery. So they'll be going strong now. They are closed tonight. For some reason, they chose not to remain open tonight, so that was a good way for me to do the broadcast, work that in tonight. But they will be open tomorrow, and they will be open on Halloween from, oh, I think they open from 7 probably to 11 or till midnight they may go on Halloween. And then also, too, on Saturday, which will be November 3rd, they're doing a clown run house or something where everything from Halloween goes, and it all goes over to, like, killer clowns or whatever that is, and they're doing that on Saturday. So just a couple things they got going on with them there. So some other extra entertainment if you're looking for that. Oh boy, let's see here. Tonight, uh, we have Mr. Pete Crapia, who's no stranger to Paranormal Radio. Hello. Pete's been on before. Yeah, all of a sudden, I don't know if I could hear you, Pete. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, oh, there, there you go. go. There you are. Yeah, I could hear you. And then we have Paul. Uh, Paul, Paul prefers us not to say his last name, which is fine with me, so we're just going to refer to him as Paul. Paul, thank you so much. Welcome to Paranormal Radio. Oh, thank you very much. First time, good. You sound real good on there, too. Yeah. Yeah, really nice and loud. You can barely hear me, though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you guys are um, too. Um, Bachelor's Grove nuts. Yes, we met at Bachelor's Grove. Oh, okay. In a unique and I'm, way. And I'm, I met you at Bachelor's Grove. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, Bachelor's Grove seems to be the place to go to meet people, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Well, it's Not, kind of like a I bar, but happier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, yeah, exactly. A little yes, bourbon. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of those type of things. Okay, Pete, what do you want to start off with here? You always have something interesting to well, say. Well, how, uh, how me and Paul met. Maybe that would be a good start. Um, yeah, let's hear that. Let's get the intro on I that. Mean, I mean, I arrived at the cemetery, and not even five minutes later, you come walking in, right? And you, like, beelined it right at me. Yeah, so uh, I like to use the trails across from Betcher's Grove. I go go there for, like, a little run every once in a while. And um, I actually went. I haven't been in Betcher's Grove in years oh, uh, okay. to this point. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to go back there and take some photographs uh, for something else I was working on. And... Um, I just saw him in the, the seminar. I was so, so happy to be there again, you know, and I was taking pictures and uh, we just started talking and I kind of was telling him a little bit about my, my backstory of Bachelors Grove. Mm-hmm. And he now, was wasn't this really like the interested. first time you were telling your story, though, to the yes. public? Yes, it was. Just a random person, me. And that's yeah. when I thought maybe you knew me, but you didn't know me. I know. I had no idea who you were. So <laughs> I, I found the story very exciting. I, I'm not, um, I've never really been into the, the paranormal world or anything uh, growing up or, or, or whatnot. Okay. So this yeah. was just all kind of a very coincidental thing. And But I've I've been involved in Bachelors Grove, though, for, for a long time, years ago. Did you have any experiences as a Bachelors Grove? Any experiences with the paranormal? Well, you can, yeah. Over time, I guess you can get into it in some ways, right? Um, Depends yes. on what you define what what he's witnessed, but okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I've made a lot of entries there 
um, straight out of like high school and college for a span of maybe okay. about five years. Okay. And um, I, at the time, I couldn't say that that I saw or felt or anything out of the ordinary. And right. um, well, then what were you entering? What were you kept like in a little journal? This You're is where the things. twist comes in, right? What were you right. Yeah. So okay. we we weren't going in there specifically for for the paranormal. Um, my buddy Ed uh, kind of started the whole thing with for us. We were driving around that that area one night, and he said to us like, "Hey, this this place, Bachelors Grove," and I had never heard of it up to this point. And he was kind of telling us how it's like a real hot spot for for ghosts, and and he said that there's devil worshiping and all the stuff that goes on back there. And uh, I couldn't stop thinking about it that whole night, you know. So when I got home, I was thinking about it and going to sleep thinking about it. And when I woke up the next day, I contacted another buddy of mine who was in the car, and and we're like, hey, we got to go check this out, you know. Let's go see if we can find these these devil worshippers, you know. Oh, so that's what it was. You were interested in the devil worshippers, okay? Yeah. So not so much the supernatural occurrences, like you know the normal things people claim to have witnessed at Bachelor's Grove. You're interested more in that right. part of it. Oh, okay. Right. So right. that's kind of what brought you to the cemetery. Right. Well, that would bring you there at an odd hour too. You wouldn't be there during day, daylight hours looking for that. You have to be no. there at night. Right. Okay. Correct. Oh, all right. Oh, interesting. So yeah, yeah. We, we first started going, we were, you know, just kind of making these entries. We had no idea about this place or the ins and outs of it. And mm -hmm. I okay. mean, <laughs> you know, in a way, that's a good way to go into it. It really is. It's yeah. good. It's good to go into something not knowing. It really is. It, especially we, that place. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, but of course, it's it's so well known. It, it's almost hard to find someone that has not at least somewhere along the line heard of Bachelors Grove Cemetery because sure. it's a very well known paranormal hotspot. So, you know, most people have heard of it, seen things about it. Um, there's a few magazines out now at the newsstands and stuff, and they're listing it as like one of the most haunted spots in the world and, and all of this. So, yeah, so it gets it gets its name out there. So it's, it would be almost kind of hard to find somebody that has not at least heard something about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, over the years, it's really picked up momentum of, of oh, yeah. mainstream, mm -hmm. yeah. especially, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, always was. So actually, what put you out there was the devil worshippers. Now you don't do this yourself. No, no. Um, we had a group of guys that that did it. Um, uh -huh. Oh, you met a group out there that did this. No, uh, we were all friends, like lifelong friends. Okay. That we all just kind of huddled together and we're like, hey, let's let's go try and experience something very. I unique. think he was asking the whole. Oh, I'm you're, sorry. You're not the devil worshippers. No, no, negative. Negative. no, no, you're no, not, no. You're not them. No, no, no. no. I no. knew that, but I just wanted to. No, no, no. no. I just wanted to get that across over. No, the, no. I, knew, I knew you weren't, yeah. but I just wanted to get that across over the radio. So when we're talking, people that are listening to this, they know just exactly who you are and what you where you stand. Okay. Right. All right. So I just wanted to make that clear. You're not a devil. No, worshiper. Just, no, no. His main focus was interested in the devil worshiping yeah. aspect of the place. Gotcha. Okay. So that's what you. That's what brought you there to see if there's any truth to this witchcraft and devil Correct. worshiping. I had heard of all this many years ago. Quite honestly, I was not aware that it was still going on, but apparently this is still something that goes on. There. It's pretty weak. Yeah. But, well, anyway, I don't want to yeah. interrupt the story, so, yeah. so go on, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so this was back, we first started this maybe in 2000. And, uh, okay, went, so went about 18 years. Okay, so it's been going on for a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we stopped in 2004, um, and then we kind of... What, what did you stop? You stopped... Like making entries and all that. Oh, so yeah, making, that was the end of, of it. Things. What yeah. exactly were you noting down? Were you noting down people that were there? Were you noting down things that were going, rituals that may have been going on? What were you, what were you actually noting? Actually, I didn't you know? uh, start noting until year uh, 2007. So okay. after yeah. our experiences were done uh, back there, I had gone in close to Halloween in 2007. What were the experiences? Boy, I got a lot of questions I right. want to ask you. So you said after our experiences were done, what were your experiences that were done? So, um... I'd say out of, I couldn't even tell you how many entries we made, but there was maybe five or six off the top of my head that we actually kind of collided with them. Okay. Oh, okay. So um, we got a lot of information about what they, who they were, who they actually were, okay. and, and yeah. it actually isn't as as sophisticated as like devil worshiping with rituals, and it wasn't. It was more of like gothic groups that were I get you. just okay. kind of back. That's kind of why I say weak. A lot of that stuff out so there not is actual, like it's lower not, level. It's not like actual authentic satanic worship that type of thing no burning bodies, bodies if it, you know yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. unless people were burning right. coffins yeah. back yeah. in the day but that's not the same level coffins or corpses skulls skulls and things like okay. that so actual actual but this is more modern worship. times okay yeah. Yeah. Here. yeah yeah the, there was me, uh, apparently multiple groups back there okay. um one group apparently I mean, this is all secondhand inf information that we got later on hmm. one group was kind of like an aggressive group. Secondhand information, excuse me for interrupting, sure. they can sometimes not be such a credible source Correct. when you're getting it secondhand. Correct. Okay, all right. Um, 
it, it came to it came time that we we had to figure out what we were actually dealing with or who we were dealing with, who we were even looking for. Um, so my cousin, he was kind of like, he didn't go in with us, but he was like the research guy. And, um, he started reaching out. This was back before. So your motive, your motive was actually to go in there, see if these people were there, investigate them, find out what they were doing and, and just see what this was all about. Well, we, we wanted to confront, confrontation. Yeah, it's okay. a little bit more elevated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. Maybe I'll just start no. with like a no, timeline. No, 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 it's okay. Or, yeah. no, 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 I'm just, I'm just okay. I know, I kind of know so a little bit of the story. I kind of know a little bit okay. with this, but I'm just listening to this and I'm thinking, gee, our listeners are going to understand this. Are they going to know what's going on? So that's why I'm doing this sure. just to clarify it for them because, you know, we kind of know what's going on here, but I want to make sure okay. people that may listen to this broadcast understand where you're coming from. Sure, that's why I'm sure. saying these things. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we were in there all intention to, go in, uh, find what we perceived as, as devil worshipers okay, yeah. and confront them and make them go away. Okay. <laughs> um, if they were harmful to people, you know what I mean? We weren't, did we you, did you find them harmful to people? Did you, when things you witnessed out there, things you may have noted yes. down, you did find harmful things? Yes. Harmful in what way? What were they actually doing that would be harmful? Um, there were times where we had made entries and people were, were coming out um, our our main path in was um, the like Menard place, wasn't the it? Menard, yeah, behind the yeah, cell phone yeah. tower. We used to call it the tunnel entrance because just because the way the trees are formed, it's like this big circle. The back door, but so the cluster of homes that are by the cell phones. Gotcha. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. Entry okay. there. Yeah. So we would come through there, and I, I think that was a, probably a pretty mainstream entrance. Uh, we would run into a lot of like uh, curiosity seekers and whatnot sure. uh, mm-hmm. on that entrance. Uh, so when we were coming in one one particular night, there was groups of people coming out and they were really shook up um i remember a guy and a girl um walking towards us like she was kind of like holding on to the the guys crying and um like hey what's what's going on back so there something and, back there startled them or and they said yeah there's people jumping yeah. out of trees back there there's like all mm. these guys in cloaks running around and we're like hey they're you know let's go you know that's so, what you so were like, there for right yeah guys, so, in, guys yeah. in cloaks and hoods and things like yeah. that around. okay so these would be some People who are devil worshippers or devil worshipper wannabes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All Correct. right. Hmm. Yeah. So we make our way back there, and, mm-hmm. and sure enough, there's like uh, more people we kind of confront on the path. Like, hey, don't go back there. There's some nuts running around back in the cemetery, and okay, that just kept fueling us to keep going forward. And, and but was there outside of it maybe startling people? Of course. And now, you know, of course, you're in the cemetery. It's after dark. You're in a very uh, in a cemetery that's known for a lot of strange activity, even during the daylight hours. And now if people start jumping out of trees and stuff that are wearing cloaks and hoods, I think most people would tend to be a little sure. startled by something like this. Sure. But were they actually doing like any physical harm or anything to anybody? Were they actually, outside of startling them and, and shaking some people up, were they actually, you know, maybe having physical contact and, and that I think that thing? was toward the end, right? Yeah. So yeah, then the story is more towards the end of, yeah. of, okay. of our stay there. So I'm, um, I'm, put, I'm putting the cart in front of the horse then. Sure. Huh? Okay. I, can, I, I can get into okay. one that there was an actual confrontation that was a little bit further uh, prior to, to this story. Um, so we, we had gone in in the middle of, like, spring, like April, and, and usually by then— Really not looking for much in there. Uh, yeah. They could be, I, I don't know, but we for that uh, that entrance, we we really weren't looking to mm-hmm. to really sure. con- collide with them. But we had just gone in, we missed it. You know, we didn't go in all all winter. We're like, hey, let's go get our legs again. You know, go check the place out, see if there's any big changes, and kind of ran into the the cemetery area, which nothing as far as I, I'm concerned with the, with the people we were looking for ever really happened in the actual cemetery. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, so we kind of ran around there a little bit and, you know, we were always big believers in respecting the grounds in that place. We, we would never, yes, I'm a firm believer in that too, in any cemetery for that matter. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. um, for some reason we, we never really stopped when we were in there and just kind of listened and, and focused on the environment. And, you know, we, we would always go in and look around real fast and ah, nothing's here. Let's go. And we'd leave, you know, or. We'd kind of go through some back trails and whatnot and couldn't find it. We'd leave. But for, for whatever reason that night, it was just a very peaceful, calm night. The moon was out real bright. And okay. Yeah. We kind of stopped. There was this fallen tree in the cemetery mm-hmm. that, that had just must have recently happened. And um, we were kind of hovering by where the top of the tree would be, the leaves sure. and all that. And okay. we were just kind of sitting there and... I'd say a good few minutes, you know. Looking back, it's hard because it was a long time ago and... You know, trying to fill in these details of. I, I remember the big things that happened. And I try to fill in the details as best mm-hmm. as I can. 
uh, we started hearing like like noises from across the creek, like almost like whispering, talking, and I'm kind of listening. And I'm like, you know, that's that's got to be people because mm-hmm. there's no rhyme or, or reason or or pattern to the noise. You there's know, like, more people sneaking in, yeah, right? Like, thing. yeah, because okay. like animals usually have the same repetition. You know yes. what I mean? When they, yeah. So I look over at my my friend and you know the guy that that's always made entries with me and. You know, I could see him perked up. I'm like, you hear that? And he's like, yeah, I hear, th- I, I hear it. And, like people are talking over there. So like, hey, let's go, let's go check it out. So we come back around out, out of the cemetery, and we take that that trail. It would just be to the south of the cemetery, along the fence, and it leads you to the creek. Gotcha. Okay. All right. The yeah. old road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For people referencing. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. we get there uh, to the creek itself. Um, we had uh, there were three of us there. Uh, the first guy goes over uh, the creek, the rocks, boom, right over. Second guy goes halfway, slips on a rock, falls uh, into the creek. I mean, it wasn't very deep at the point, but yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't winter, so right. Yeah. <laughs> so he's you know, but maybe halfway up his arm, okay. and you know, his, yeah, his right. chest got wet a little bit, and he gets. I mean, as serious as you want to be, you have to start laughing at that point. Yeah, you know? Sure, his body just fell in the creek. <laughs> I so, can't tell you how many people I know have fallen into that <laughs> creek. So. You know, we, we get across, and we made this big scene. You know, he takes his, his uh, sweatshirt off, kind of ties it around his waist, and he's got this white T-shirt on glowing, you know, mm-hmm. in, at the night. Mm-hmm. So we still made a good effort. We went back there, and it just seemed like everything was gone, and we're like, man, we just, we blew it, you know. Okay. But maybe it was nothing so anyway. You were, you were going there with the intention of possibly catching But the whole intention is to confront them, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. S- oh, sorry. No, I was just going to ask. Now, why are you so big on confronting these people? Pete knows how I operate, and he knows I like to play the devil's advocate, no pun intended, sure. for the no, show. No. But I, th- I think male testosterone plays a role. Do yeah, people, we were young. But do these people just not have a right to be there, too? I mean, if they're really not actually physically harming anyone. You know anything, what? Some of these people you know, are not that friendly out there, okay. and I think that's where this kind of plays a role in what you were doing. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that aren't friendly in the real world anyway, outside sure. of cemetery world sure. and paranormal world. But I'm, I'm saying... And like I said, you know, you know me, I like to play the devil's advocate here. And they would have a right to be there, too, would they I, not? I would, sure. I would agree I with mean, you. you know, yeah. Especially you know. now that I'm an adult, you if know. It's, yeah. If it's but like, as a if, kid, yeah, you know, we say, were yeah. just looking for adventure. And if, if and some sort of a personal vendetta or something no, you it wasn't. against this, you know, you'd say, well, all right, I could see you're, you know, sort of against this type of thing. Yeah. And you say, no, this doesn't belong any place, Dick, anything like that. But if it's mm. a child's, you know, like a kid's thing when you're teenaged, you know, yeah. those those wild years like that, you're just right. kind of looking for something to go on. Uh, uh, yeah. We kind of looked at it as like... You know, we, we were always involved in adventurous kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. like, well, if we want to confront people, we weren't the type to go in, in a, to bars and start fighting people. And I mean, it, No, let's go to the cemetery. So, like, let's go <laughs> to somewhere where we <laughs> yeah. think is, like, people that might, you know, be doing harmful things. And, okay. You know, yeah. it's, we, you, and you that made it a little justified, right. You know, you justify it, yeah. it to yourself okay. in that way. Sure, you right. know? But you lost your chance, and I think I remember at some point uh, you ran into some people that were in distress. Yes, on another visit. Right. Well, this this one here, I'll, I'll continue with this this story. So we we exit out now. My buddy got all wet. Right. We exit out back the way we came in. We're kind of running back towards that that old tunnel entrance behind the cell phone. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And as we're on it, I start to hear like thumping, like footsteps coming from my right, which would be the south. And a little bit behind me. Okay. There's like a couple of trails behind there. Yeah. yeah. There's like parallel trails that all run back there. And um, I tell my, the my buddy friend, hey, hey, do you, do you hear that? And, and uh, he's like, yeah, I, I hear it too. And we we run up a little further, and this trail that I'm on kind of meshes together, almost like maybe within a few feet. Like I converge a little bit. Yeah. Before okay. one peels off yeah. back into the woods or something. Sure kind of enough. Yeah. I, I don't think this guy realized he was catching up to us. I don't think we realized we were catching or slowing down to him. We kind of met right there. And he was facing me almost like chest forward, running straight mm-hmm. ahead. And I looked at him and then the trail split okay. again. Um, that's I, I called out, hey, hey, you know, I got somebody here. And, okay. Um, I turned into the next available little off trail and walked up maybe, I don't know, 10 yards into it. And there's some guy standing there in cloak. Okay. With what appeared to be a cloak, you know, hood up. Okay. Long black. Uh, like a monk's robe type yeah, thing. Yeah, long hooded, black robe kind of okay. thing. Hood up over his head. Yeah, and he's kind of standing there uh, staring at 
like me and I was kind of staring back at him and I start walking towards him and he kind of like started lunging towards me, you know, like, like roostered up, or something. up he's going to terrify you. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I just kept going towards him. I ended up grabbing a hold of him. We got into it. Huh. Um, I, did he do anything confrontational to you outside of just maybe sticking his chest out at you and maybe, maybe looking a little aggressive, but. No, that was about all I needed. Yeah, okay, that yeah. was enough for you. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, didn't he have some friends? Yeah. So I, I take him to the ground. Um, hmm. my buddies come up, back behind me, and then all of a sudden, like this whirlwind, of the trees start shaking, and we're just getting pelted with rocks and sticks and handfuls of dirt, hmm. and kind of like all shielded up. And the guy stands up, and I tried to grab him back down by his outer garment mm -hmm. and when i pulled he stripped out of his his cloak and oof, he took like off lean back on it or something yeah so i kind of stumbled backwards a little bit and we're getting pelted with this stuff so we kind of retreated back to the main path for a second the or the the cell phone tower path whatever you okay, call that yeah. thing and then we heard like a bunch of movement in there and then we went back so there's in. more of them in there okay yeah, okay we went back in mm -hmm. And by that time, it was like they were scattered, gone. Hmm. We're like, man. Like, did we you just... show the garment yet? No, there no. were there were a bunch no. of them, and there were two of you. There was three of us, and an unknown number a number hmm. of them. There could have. But it's funny; they all scattered. They were more afraid of a couple of you than right a, a group of them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah. there's kind of a twist to his story, and I'll get into it. Okay. I know this is radio; yeah. nobody can see. Anyway, it. this is what you, this is the thing that you brought with but you today. He, uh, yeah, he brought which, home course, a souvenir. He's which got of the garment we can't, with him. We can't see this. This is radio, but actually, it's a black robe, solid black, solid black, and it does have does it have sleeves in it. It's. It's, it's a little cut. I was like, gonna say it's kind of primitively made. It's not like a real finished thing. So it, it there yeah, is okay. no there is no hood on it. Okay. So I, I oh this is apparently shirt. he was wearing a hoodie. This is uniform. He must have been wearing a hoodie sort. underneath. But this, this is like a capish thing that would drape over you to like oh, complete okay. the. This is it's like a homemade thing. Yeah, so this it, is actually like a. I think it's a commercial like a commercial work uniform. Oh, you know what this is? It's like a, isn't this like a lab coat? Could like, be like a black lab like a lab coat. But the like, twist to me was when he told me this story. I know a lady that that wears the robes out there okay. and does stuff out yeah. in those woods and tries to mess with people hmm. as well, and she knows somebody related with who she hangs around that was in those woods and was attacked and their clothing was taken. And I'm thinking their you or their robe, just well, their robe. their robe thing. I mean, they're not taking. I mean, it ain't a robe, but yeah, that's, not, I mean, hanging no, shoes not from the street. Street. No, I mean, you know, yeah, right. No, no, they were they were out there doing funny business. Oh, okay. And so. Nothing like ritualistic from what I was told, but they, they're they younger kids, so to speak, you know, and they're just like a close knit of friends around those do cluster people, of homes by the grove. Do these people really know what they're doing, or are they just out there for the sake of just terrorizing people, or are they actually yeah. doing some sort of a religious well, ceremony? When we, uh, the, the information we got back then was um, that there was multiple, like I said, multiple gothic groups that hang out back there and do all whatever right. they do. Yeah. Uh, one in particular was very aggressive towards all anybody who goes in, um, and they weren't necessarily. They would just go back there to get you know high, drunk, whatever they would do oh, party back well, there, and then they would. To do with, you well, know, then they and then they would terrorize the the public. Right. They'd come in and um, whether they they physically attacked people, um, I'm sure they did. Uh, we witnessed the aftermath it, of one. Yeah, it would um, be interesting. I don't know if you ever took the time to do this, or if it, maybe the thought never really occurred to you. You kind of seemed to have went in there with your motive already set. But it would, be, it would have been kind of interesting just to watch these people, like from a distance, discreetly, yeah. and see if they were actually lighting fires, doing they something. Well, I, I tell you what, the, the lady, some sort of ceremony, something sure. going on, or were they just there solely for the sake of, you know, shooting up, getting high, drinking, whatever, you know, yeah. what have you? Was was that the thing? And then all of a sudden they get a little hopped up, and they start getting aggressive towards people or is it actually something that they're doing that is some sort of a ceremonial thing why they're there sure yeah that would have what I, well no some are ceremonial been. some are are aggressive and mm -hmm. i've only recently learned that the same lady that's been wearing this robe she's been known to scream and yell at people to get the hell out of the cemetery okay she stopped doing that i guess over 10 years ago but she was doing that for a while so and she's, it doesn't she's surprise going there for a while then if she's you know she go in there stabbing the ground with a knife when i'm there I mean, there's like really crazy weird crap that goes down there at the Grove. Yeah, we all we all know that. But, but <laughs> yeah, it's like we, if yeah, I'm there, yeah. she didn't care. It was like no nothing. But she don't like do it when nobody when, or when everybody's there. 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I, I got to witness some really weird crap from these kind of people. Yeah, yeah. They're, now, you're seeing this in the after hours, of course, at night. Oh, no, this was during the day. Yeah, I seen some stuff there during the day, too. No, some this, people this chanting and some things and all that, but nothing like that. Nobody stabbing but, me around. Uh, they, they may fool around and try to scare people in their robes, but they also have their level of pr- uh, praying to the moon goddess okay, and growing your own sage and doing some weird stuff. And, all you right. know, yeah. but at the same time, yeah, they are in the cemetery. At least she is. And she used to scream and yell at people, get out of here. You don't belong here. This isn't for you and blah, well, blah, blah. Well, it's not for you either. You and know, like, well, you have, if you have a right to be there, everyone else has a right to be there right. also. Right. Again, she stopped doing that. But, okay. um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't want to distract from the yeah. story. So, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> so anyway, you had a confrontation with this guy. You actually pulled this this robe, which you brought with you today. You actually pulled this thing off of him, and you got this for proof that these people are out there. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then um, kind of back to the, the story I was, uh, I was telling originally, I kind of skipped ahead to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, when we had entered this one night, um, this was towards the tail end of uh, even us going there any any longer um okay. we had a few back and forth confrontations with with this group back there um i believe at this point they knew who we were you know and yeah we kind of knew who yeah. they were you know uh, they were very they're very difficult to find like you said to come and watch them we've never in the years that i did it we never came upon them um like without them knowing we were we were there okay you know so it would have been very difficult to like to be discreet okay. yeah, yeah okay. by the time yeah. you got to whatever they were doing they were already scattered and gone okay. or watching Plus you too, or, if these people are in dark robes and that and it's night they're a little dif- difficult to see too so sure yeah okay all right um yeah so we went in uh, and i i mentioned that the people were coming out saying that there was people doing crazy things and you know with robes and whatnot in the cemetery and We'd gotten in there or in uh, onto the main path, and we jogged the main path um, to about where the cemetery starts. Where you know, when you say the main path, do you mean the old Midlothian? The old turnpike? Midlothian okay. Turnpike, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it connects from that yeah. that okay. tunnel path, and then uh, so when we we get to about where you could see the cemetery fence where it breaks to the right. Okay. Um, there was some girl like. Hugging a tree, you know, oh, like, like, help think, me out. She was yelling. I think you told this story to me once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she was yeah. yelling, help yeah, me, help me, very help afraid. me. Yeah, very frightened. And there was yeah. a, a man in the, like, right in the, the entrance of the cemetery. He was on the ground, looked like, I don't know if he had just gotten beat up or whatnot. Oh, nice. Drunk okay. or whatever. Right. Yeah, I, I couldn't know. tell at the time. So we're like, hey, we got to, you know, forget these these devil worshiper guys. We Let's just get these people out of here. Well, then you see him towards the pond, right? No, that was a different story. That was a different, okay. So here we started to go towards these these people and and I had stood up and yelled like hey MFers you know just to startle everything and but you know uh, another thing I'd like to kind of just to intervene for just a moment on this too if these people are out there they're being aggressive to other people they're causing harm to other people why not call the authorities yeah right like the cops are really going to do anything though yeah, I think two people are afraid that they're going to get. So? No, on occasion the cops are even afraid to go in there alone. Hmm. They're not going to. The they're police just, are afraid to go in there. Hmm. I've called them out there during a grave digging, and they took the silver ceremonial shovel and just left and didn't care. You know, mm-hmm. they, they they they're just whatever. And maybe, of course, too, they're probably by now kind of up to you know where with all of this too, because they probably over the years have gotten so many calls. And, yeah, it's calls. old. It's okay. getting old. Yeah, there's so many calls. Yeah, gotten I think two kids think like well, if I call, I'm going to get in trouble for being in there, and I don't want to have to answer that to my my parents. Yeah, uh, that's right. Exactly. That could very well be too. If you're calling and saying someone else is in there, they will say, "Well, what are you doing in there?" You right. know, yeah. Right. So you're just as guilty as they. Right. So yeah, yeah. So hmm. yeah, so we I, I kind of stand up and yell and. And we see like two groups of guys in these These hooded people scatter. Okay. Oh. One ran towards the the pond, the lagoon. Mm -hmm. The other ran up towards the creek path. Okay. So we kind of split and chased, you know, as far as we could, and boom, they, you know, they were they were gone, you Mm -hmm. know. Okay. Um. The one group of of my buddies came back and they kind of helped. I don't know what they did with. Interesting. They're sort of aggressive to other people, but yet when they see, well, but maybe by this point. By this point, this was at the very very end. So yeah. Yeah, this was at the very end of our our entrances. We Mm -hmm. would have had one. We were planning on doing one more, and then I could, you know, that that got. Canned because of the police, but hmm. it's oh, a different so story. did get involved. Okay. Well, it was like Halloween uh, night or something, wasn't yes. it? Oh, yeah. well, yeah, that would be the night they would get involved. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, so that night there, we we 
we kind of ran after them a little bit and whatever they they kind of scattered in the woods i said hey we got you know let's let's go look around make sure that there's nobody else around here and we ended up bumping into three or i forget two or three off the top of my head two or three more young kids like not even teenagers i'd say maybe 12 13 at the oldest and they were kind of like cowering under like this old fallen tree you know and <laughs> well, i'm like hey are you you know they, you guys they bit all right off, they bit off a little more than they can yeah. chew they didn't realize it was gonna be the scarier thing right yeah, i didn't realize it was gonna be quite this terrifying yeah right so yeah. we we kind of helped them up and we're like hey you know we're we're not gonna hurt you we're, we're just gonna get you out of here okay and so we take them out uh back down the main the main path and uh when i meet up with my other buddies they're like hey we sent those other guys down they're gone you know and they had found a couple more people in the cemetery hiding behind tombstones and they sent them on their way. And, uh, we took these kids out when we we're like, we we're going to go with them cause they're young. You know, I don't want to yeah. feel terrible. If something happened to you know, sure, kids. Of kids course. Yeah, they're, they're kids or children. Yeah. So we get up to the top, uh, by the, by where like the, the sign would be the entrance itself. And we, we made the right into the, that, that tunnel, that, that tunnel path that leads gotcha. around. Cause yeah, I'm like, okay. They're yeah. like, oh, we don't want to go back in the woods. And we're like, hey, <laughs> hey, listen, man, this we is go out, out there. The, this is yeah, it. Yeah, this is your the, way out. The, the yeah. police are going to catch yeah, us, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, believe us. Believe me, we're going to be able to protect yeah, you. We're uh-huh. going to get you out of here, you know. And um, the whole time, you could feel, like, I don't know if it was just my intuition or whatever it was, but you could feel the, the presence of them walking with us, you know, mm. at a distance. Like, they're... I felt it was almost like a pack of wolves, you know what I mean? And okay. it just had this feeling of this Some eerie, sort of sinister, eerie feeling. Yeah, it's just know? something not quite right. Do we need to take a break? We're going to have to stop for sure. just a moment and take a break, and then come on back with us, folks, and listen to more of this interesting stuff. You're listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Jack O'Lantern 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich, and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network it's very big. on Wednesday, October the 31st, the year 2018. And this is Jack O'Lantern, 89.7 WRHS-FM, Norwich, Illinois. And now back to Bob Trisek and Paranormal Radio. Okay, we are back on. Uh, thank you for coming back and listening with us. Just in case you're just kind of tuning in, maybe halfway through the broadcast or something, we have a gentleman with us, Paul. We will not give Paul's last name. He prefers to, to remain sort of anonymous, and I respect that with him. And then, of course, Pete Crapia, who could care less about being anonymous, and myself, Bob Trazik. And we're just talking about some of the shenanigans and some of the things that go on in Bastards Grove Cemetery, some of these legends about this devil worship and all this that goes on back there and, and some things that go on about some other people, some other groups there maybe being a little hostile towards people. And he actually brought in a robe that he actually took from a confrontation with some of these people. They wear these black hooded type robes that they wear. And when I first looked at this thing, it had like a, like a tag sewn on the back, like, you know, like you'd get from a clothing that you buy clothing. So it's not like a homemade type thing. But then when Pete just, when we had the break, Pete kind of held it up. And I could see it's cut in such a way that it does resemble like a cloak or a cape. It's, it's cut that way. So you don't have like sleeves that you put your arms through. So it c- sort of fits loosely over your back. And it almost has like tails on the back, like a tuxedo type tail type thing to it. So it's it's just cut in a weird way. It was made for the occasion, whatever occasion that would whatever be. Whatever that I, was, I would yeah, say yeah. that uh, my guess, personal guess, is it was cut because I believe that the guy who followed us out, his job was to follow people out. Mm. And I think it was cut so he wasn't going to get hung up on things running through those thin trails okay. like yeah. on Thornbush. That, that would work. I yeah. think it just sleeps. So these aren't, these aren't robes that would be like, you know, like down to the ground type thing like that. Something they can move a little freer. This is not Correct. the kind of robe with the long No, sleeve. not at all. Yeah, yeah, belted around the waist. That type this of is right. something more yeah. It's like a flexible. vest with a yeah. cape on it. Yeah, it's yeah. A little Even yeah. almost made for the summer. In a mm. way, yeah, like yeah, it's, it was it's all this cool. all happened pretty much during the summer and and sometimes in the September. But so, yeah, it's kind of a medium weight material, so it's not a real heavy heavy fabric. So yeah, okay, well, any dude, yeah, mm. interesting stuff. So basically, people go into the cemetery at, ni- cemetery at night looking for the paranormal or whatever they are seeking there, and instead they get more than they bargain for because they get terrorized by people that start jumping out of the trees wearing black robes and terrorizing them and chasing them and you go in there and come to their rescue and find people hovering behind tombstones hugging trees that are crying and very Correct. afraid and you kind of rescue them and get them out of there and that so yeah. he's not such a bad guy no no <laughs> <laughs> well that's yeah. what my mom always told me you know yeah, you're not a yeah. bad guy 
<laughs> any particular time, well, maybe we shouldn't even be, well, we'll keep, we can say it this way. If you don't want to answer, it's fine. If you don't want to give something out, maybe some some information. But any particular time of year, like when this seems to be more active or any particular days of the week when this is more active. So if you do want to go in there at night, which you're really not supposed to be in there anyway at night, but if you do want to go in there and if you want to try to avoid this sort of hostile activity, these would be better nights to do it. Anything um, that you could say about that? Yes, uh, actually, yeah. um, back when we were doing this, and again it was 2000 to 2004, mm -hmm. we, I, I, I could maybe remember one other time um Conf or having a confrontation with them like one, two in the morning. If you go very, very late, we rarely ever saw anybody there. Even um, regular curiosity seekers, once in a while, they'd come down. So after the midnight hour. Yeah. yeah well, I, I, my experience, once it's two or three in the morning, like you're barely going to run into somebody. Yeah. That's when you run into the ghosts because those are like the witching hours, isn't it? Like three o'clock in but the like morning. But right, like three right after yeah. sunset. Yeah, yeah, you get that influx, and then yeah, maybe like before. that ten o'clock thing, the ten o'clock rush. I noticed, yeah. but I don't know what your experience was. I'd say yeah, usually around eleven would Somewhere, be uh, yeah. when we would usually run into them. So after midnight, you'd be sort of safe, and I. Yeah, I would even say maybe people. even a little longer than that. Maybe now, about this one. This has been some time ago. Yes. What compelled you to hang on to this thing all these years? It was you? I, huh? I would. It was just such <laughs> a the the whole experience of of it. Like I, I think. Did I was, you ever wash this or do anything? No, I just kept it as it was. That's it. I threw it in the it. back of my my car, yeah. and I mean, I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And years later, yeah. you know, it come back up. I'm like, oh man, this thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. I can't get rid of it. It's just it was such a a unique, mm -hmm. yeah, few years, you know, of experiences yeah. Yeah. that we we had, and it's just to me, it's just nice to have. Okay, so what's happened that. since? You've sort of moved on to other things. This is no longer your thing. Do you do you do anymore? No, no, we we don't do any. Um, we tried to branch out during those years mm -hmm. to find other locations that would have uh, this presence there. Um, everything kind of came up empty for us. Not that that's not there, but we never found any evidence or anything like okay. that. Right. Branches Grove was the only but place. For some of these people, it is they're literally their backyard. Yeah. Those, oh, those yeah. homes around there, some of those are yeah. that those are some of those people. Yeah. yeah. So. I think to the oh, some of the people, of the some of these that are doing this, they're, they're actually they living live close by uh, there. hop, skip, jump away from the place. Maybe there's a reason they live so close. So well, I don't know if that's why they wanted to live so yeah, close. Possible. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's okay. an advantage of being huh, bored. Interesting. Maybe. We live by the grove. But you, as far as the paranormal, nothing. You never seen any of the paranormals or anything except just this weird stuff going on like this. Correct. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. it was because when we were there, we never, never really took time to to look for it. Um, do, do you really take time to look for it, or do you think just happen? That I don't know. Yeah, I have yeah, zero yeah. experience yeah. in that I'm world. I'm actually surprised you haven't. Actually. Yeah, really, yeah. I am too, it's quite just, honestly, yeah. Yeah. You know, it seems like you did spend quite a lot of time out there for a while. We were, yeah. But it's not, uh, honestly, I'm surprised that at some point you didn't, you know, maybe you're just so involved with what you were I doing. I think we were so focused on yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. Uh -huh. and our, you know, the, your adrenaline's up, and mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're always kind of looking around, like waiting for something physical to, to jump out. Yeah. And not even any weird lights. Not, you know, Nothing. Not no flashlights, I, uh, no balls of light zipping around. And nothing. No. I mean, well, you see plenty. You know, people walking with flashlights that, or you lights that you assume are flashlights, mm -hmm. but yeah, I couldn't say any particular time where I, I ran okay. into anything. So now, what was the end of the story here? Did these people finally disappear? Did you just sort of give up on it? So are they still going there, to your best of your knowledge? You know that that last story about guiding the people out—that was kind of our last confrontation with them. Even though we tried one more, one big last ditch effort we mm -hmm. had some good information what we thought was good information um from a one of our outside sources uh, that we kind of hooked up with um no no no, no, no it wasn't no. pete now, i'd never met pete before oh, that's whenever, right you didn't whenever know him. yeah we met over the summer or whatever that 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 was i don't even remember what month it was it was just the exact day but. it was just a couple of couple few months ago um so we got information that and this is kind of a boring story because it, it doesn't end uh, with anything exciting, but I'll tell you how we got there. Mm -hmm. um, so we got information that Halloween was falling, I believe, on a Sunday morning or Saturday. I, I believe it was a Sunday morning. So Saturday night was going to be a big thing for them. And we were like, oh, there, there's going to be tons of police around. All the information that we were given was, was really spot on. Mm -hmm. And we spent weeks, like, finding a way around like the police and trying to, to really get good on those parallel trails behind the tunnel trail. And we would go in there in the daytime, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we found this, this area in the back across the Creek 
um, it's kind of like a clearing. So if you walk, there's like a, a main, like that main, the road continues. I'm assuming that's the road, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. Past the creek, and then it's more covered with dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then if you go into that, and I'd say maybe 50 yards, um, and that's just a guesstimation, there's a, a, a kind of a clearing area. It's like a swampy area when it's wet. Yeah, so he knows what, of course, know it. he knows what exactly what yeah. I'm talking about. And there was like a lot of like... Um, uh, like fallen trees, like big branches that were mm-hmm. sitting around. They were kind of like in a circle at that time. We're like, oh, people are sitting back here. And it looked like a small little pit for like a, they would hide a fire in. And like, this has to be our spot. You know, this has to be where they're at. Mm-hmm. So we had, had no other information other than what we were told and seeing that. So we kind of developed this whole plan around that spot. And we'd go in there during the day. We'd get this nice trail and we'd find a way out, uh, another trail that would lead us back out to, uh, I believe, Ridgeland. Mm-hmm. And then that would be how we would escape, you know, and um, spent a lot of time. But the area was surrounded with cops. So yeah, we spent a lot of time working that, that working that out, working those kinks out. And then the night came, and let, let me tell you, the blue light special was all over that place, that you know, it. blueberries and cherries everywhere. Mm-hmm. We couldn't, we didn't even want to, like, hey, guys, <laughs> you know, let's not, they're not in there. It wasn't There's dogs. no sometimes way they're in there. They bring the dogs, sometimes they got the ATVs. We were chased out by dogs once. And, yeah. yeah. Very, very in the beginning of it, we mm-hmm. got chased out by the police dogs. And, yeah, it was. Did they turn them loose on you? No, 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 no. So we were across the creek itself, and they were on the cemetery side. And um, this was, like, our very first attempt to confront these, these guys. <laughs> and there was, like, that big old tree that used to be hovered right next to the creek, you know. And we made it to that point. We came in through the Gaelic Park Mm-hmm. So we we muscled our way through all that. Oh yeah. Little did we know there was like another entrance, like right in that soccer field or anything. We we mm-hmm. went in through the thick of the woods, you know, sure. right down the creek, and we get to this big tree. And the whole the whole walk there, though, I I tell you, you can hear what sounded like moving, like people moving around, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm assuming at this point, looking back on it, that they saw the police in there and they. High tailed it out. Okay. While we were coming in like like morons, they were <laughs> leaving. Well, Halloween would be a really high traffic. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the Saturday sure. night yeah. before Pretty Halloween. Uninformed, they just they, that's their night. Let's go yeah. walk yeah. in. So yeah, we get to this tree and we're looking over there, and I could see like a light, like a flashlight, kind of coming toward. And they didn't see us or anything quite yet, and then I heard like the dispatcher, like you know the, the sound, yeah, the, yeah. the oh, ominous yeah, sound. A, yeah, yeah. That's and funny. I'm like, oh man, it's the police. And then you heard like the rattling and like the the panting. I'm like, they got dogs. <laughs> like, we just took off as fast as we could, <laughs> straight westbound, just ripping through thorn bushes and everything. We pumped. I remember getting my buddy getting tangled up and stuff. I'm pushing him through like a linebacker, you know. And we get, uh, you know, I don't know if the police actually crossed the creek and chased us out. I, they probably just thought maybe we were a startled deer. I mean, I don't know. They they never really saw us. But just the the whole idea of it was but that pretty much that was the end, huh? So yeah, yeah. That's... We uh, yeah that that was the I said I'd never go back. Now and... you're gonna write all this down, right? Actually, yeah. That, so a few years uh, after this stuff occurred, when we would meet up. Now the the guys I I did this with we were lifelong friends. I've known them thirty thirty years now plus. Okay. You know, yeah. most of them, and we'd meet up, and this always comes up. <laughs> you know maybe it's time to rekindle it and go back for old times yeah, no, no, i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> so but this always seems to come up and we you know we get such a, a kick out of of telling these stories and um i remember i went i went back in during the daytime i was i was just driving by and i was like and i gotta i just gotta go see it again and this was a couple years after mm-hmm. uh, so this was like 2007 yeah and i came in that gaelic parkway i still didn't know about the other entrance yet and you know, I, I made it to that last area that we were supposed to have our, our big confrontation. And I just, like, this feeling of, like, almost like sadness kind of came over me. You know, like, yeah, hey, I miss I miss the guys being here with me. And, yeah, I felt like, wait, how can I, like, keep this fresh, you know? And, and so I decided that day I was going to kind of make, like, write a story, you know, yeah. and, and write a book about it. And um, it took many, many years because... You you, you kind of lose your your steam with it, and then every Halloween season it kind of comes back. And, sure, that's you know, a normal yeah, that's a normal reaction to it too. And then what happens also too is after a while 
your memory sort of fades on some things. If, it, if it's something that made a real strong impression on you, that will stay with you. But other little minor details Correct. and little things, you're gonna, your memory's going to fade. So it's always best to kind of jot these things down right almost as they happen. Correct. If, if, it, you know, if you think it's something that you may be using in the future, because memories do fade. You know, we have other things that come up in life. You know? Absolutely. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that that's yeah. exactly what would happen here. And I, yeah. I, I remember these big moments, and I'm sure the other guys I'm with have their own other moments that I, maybe I had forgotten. And so we kind of talked about it and kind of tried to get as best detail as we could. The big picture is is exactly the way the outcomes happened mm-hmm. in, in the story. But it was hard to fill in the details. Yeah. So I was like, I know we ended up like this. I just forgot how we got there, <laughs> you know. So I would have to fill There's in a story a little in bit. here somewhere, yeah. Right from, from A to B, you know, point A to point B, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. and the yeah. major ones I, I can remember, like the confrontation with the guy on the that parallel trail. Like I remember that, like it happened yesterday, <laughs> you know. Um, escorting those people Fortunately, out. Fortunately, through this whole thing, though, no one was actually hurt. No, no, no one no. actually got hurt. So no. that was, that was a good thing yeah. that no one actually, you know, ended up getting shot or oh, stabbed God, yeah. or hurt no. or in some horrible way or anything like that. Well, but, that was so, that was a main reason too why we never we felt like we had like these anti you know or con, uh, contradictory uh, tactics. So mm-hmm. like they they would always try to pull us in to the woods, and we would always try to pull them out ah. onto the the open area. We felt like they couldn't hang with us in the in the open air, but we're like we they're, pu- they're pulling you into their your their space, and you're trying right. to get them into yours. So like ah. when we first started going there. They would give a, I think that they thought we were just the normal ghost uh, yeah, hunter. Yeah. And they would try to like give us something a little paranormal so it would kind of catch our interest and see how we reacted to it. Possibly spook you to get you out of there too. Correct. Yeah. And then I think they started, they well, I think, I know, they realized that, hey, they're not in here for ghosts, they're in here for us. <laughs> so they started using themselves as bait. Hmm. And then when we would start to go towards them, they would go into the some trail that they knew and try to make us go in after them. Mm. And we fell for that one time, and they... Uh, Ambush. There was an, yeah, they ambushed <laughs> us, yeah. I mean, not, okay. they they were all around, I mean... Okay, now this has been some years have lapsed from this. Yeah. You haven't been there for a while. This is a part of your life that's somewhat over, so to speak, but nonetheless rekindled from time to time when you reveal sure. stories like this. What's the justice now? Is this still going on in that cemetery? Are these people still there? Does anyone know? I haven't been hearing anything. Mm-hmm. So that's what I kind of thought myself. I thought because I have not heard nothing. Well, as far about as this. them taunting anybody, yeah. I mean, we got a guy out there that likes to bury human skulls and sell them. <laughs> he likes to bury did, the I'm skulls. I'm not kidding. Wait a minute. He oh, I've seen the, it's a human skull. Well, this wait, is wait legal, by the way, to he have a human skull. The, he buries the skull and then he sells the skull. He, if it's buried, he does a thing it? where he <laughs> you bury like, you dig it's it up like and a ritual. He buries it at the grove and then he will dig it up. It's part of the ritual, but then he will legally sell these things. Last I heard, though, he got in trouble with the law. I was going to say, how do you legally, where do you get these skulls from? eBay, well, now Bandit, you can't, you know, like, what if you need body parts, you know? eBay used to be a place until they said no more selling bones. Oh, no. Yeah, no. How you get your bones is your business, but if you have it in your possession, well, I guess it's okay. A okay. The, you there know, are certain states where it's not okay to sell, but it's it's just fine to own. That's fine. Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't know anything Wait about this until after the guy uh, pulled it. the skull in my hand. It, I'm like, you oh, this is the real deal. It's illegal to sell, but it's okay to own. Well, to It's own okay it, to own. To Certain own states eventually to... got so, I guess, upset. They said, well, don't be selling them in our state, basically. Well, but if you want to purchase them out of state, a school or whatever, you know, there's people out there that have legitimate. Well, yes, well, medical schools. But legitimate. Medical, medical schools usually have, like, the whole skeleton that type of thing. Oh, there's, like there, they have, I've seen the websites, man. Sometimes and they're, too, and they're hosted by study, people in the U.S. They study and, the skulls, like, for dental work and things like that, too, you have. But, but um... Oh, right, that's medical. That was that's a person, it. man. I don't know. It's... Jeez. <laughs> I, I'm, I'd be curious to know, where do you get these skulls from that you're burying them in Bastard's Grove? I'll show you later them. online. How about that? Jeez. Just yeah, don't go okay. buying any, please. Yeah, no, I don't want one. Are you, I don't want this. Are you kidding? <laughs> I don't want somebody's skull. So does this stuff happen out there? Yeah, it still happens yeah. out there to some hmm. degree, but it's, it's kind of like... The, what, is the not... idea, what is the idea of burying them in Bastard's Grove and then digging them up to sell them? Oh, that's... Supposedly they're absorbing they, they, something they, from yeah, the ground exactly. or it's whatever. Yeah, exactly. absorbing some sort of yeah, spiritual yeah. energy. Oh, you know? gee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Huh. 
Interesting to note, man, I tell you. And no doubt he does this for a great sum of money, too. These things are going Well, to they're work. not cheap, but uh, but he does it for somebody else who runs the website, so it's like a personal thing that they do. Well, wait a minute. Now, the now, Barry and the Skull website, thing is a special oh, option, t- apparently, t- because they uh, don't advertise they it on their, website, se- on their website. And they're selling these on a website, and it's illegal. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's it's legal to sell. It could have been New York. What? Now you're mixing me up. What? First you said it's legal to own, but it's not le- legal to sell. I'll, I'll now write, you said I'll it's legal, to, legal to own. It's just legal to own. <laughs> and then it came around to where I found eBay Bandit, where you couldn't sell them on eBay. Oh, well, yeah. That was... But then it got to where a certain place, I think it was like New York or somewhere else, were like, you, ju- you can have them in our state. But just don't go selling them in your stores or selling them on the street out of the back of your van. They just made it like don't you're not allowed to sell the body part. Hmm. So it's like a loophole. Well, go ahead, you can have your skull, but don't don't Jeez. sell it here. I just hope these people aren't going to you know abandoned cemeteries and digging someone's loved ones up and selling skulls. And that's the key. I guess you're breaking find into out. private mausoleums or something and hmm. doing something like this. Don't well, ask. Yeah, really. I don't. I don't know <laughs> if I want to know something like that. Yeah. Geez, okay. So, what's your new story then, or was this it? Oh no, this is uh, am I? It, I can't hear myself on. on, on I hear you anyone? fine. Okay. Oh yeah, I hear I'm you fine. Overly, my, I can't hear anything. Anyway, so if you're not following what I've been doing on Facebook or YouTube or anything like that, this this will be new to you both. You never have anything on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Right. You don't. <laughs> you're following the wrong Facebook page. I, I see. <laughs> uh, I see. I don't. I, I don't know what. Uh, do you have more than one? Yeah. No. You don't. No. No. Just. Just the I, one. I never see anything on your. There's somebody else page. pretending to be me. Maybe you're on that one. Oh, you're another one of these too. You know, I'm finding this lately too with these yeah, people yeah. that have more than one. They have imposters. You know, person. Well, I should uh, say they were pretending to be me. They're the only ones I I, uh, I sanctioned for years. I hated Facebook. I didn't want to touch it. Mm-hmm. So I, I just put their link on. I'm like, yeah. And then they got like ten thousand likes, and that's like their page. But for some reason, they haven't talked on it in years. They got my old phone number phone number up on there. They got my, my yeah, website address Vegas on there. And all that and everything. Yeah. And then yeah. Any, yeah. anyway, I don't know if that's yeah. the one you're looking at, but that's it hasn't been updated in years. But when I message you on that okay, one, so you let's, get the messages. Here's the story. Here's the gist of it. This is this has got me wigging out, man. I don't know, I'm, Pete. I gotta, I'm like this. Is, I got with you. I got to listen. You know how you read between the lines. I got to listen between the lines with this you. This goes back to 2004 in a way too. Okay, so here's the way this goes down. How do I even how do I even formulate this here? Okay, you know Richie, the guy who uh, wears like the overalls out there, rides the bike, cleans the garbage cans, the caretaker. Yeah, well, he's not. Well, you know, okay. So you I know, know he's the guy is. they call the caretaker. Now, he doesn't yeah. believe in the paranormal or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so people, he's not. A lot into of people think he's thing. paranormal. They think he's a ghost. Exactly. That's the point. That's I'm, the I'm guy. Mm-hmm. The running joke is that Richie is the Bachelor's Grove ghost. You'd be talking to him, and then you turn around, and he's gone. Well, he just likes to walk away really fast. He, he pees a lot in the woods too, so you know he's got to go. He's got to do his thing. So that's the running joke. So I run in about four or five guys, and we're down on the uh, the old trail by the creek by the cemetery. And here we go again. These guys are, are freaked out. And they're like, uh, do you know so-and-so? And they describe him like, oh, that's Richie. Well, yeah, well, he was just in the woods. He disappeared. And we turn around, and he's, <laughs> and he's in the cemetery. I'm like, yeah, he does it all the time. They're like, no, dude, you don't understand. He just disappeared. I'm like, and I'm like, and, it, and, I, and I look back on it, and I'm like, they were all really upset. They're just telling me, no, dude, you don't understand. Like, Pete, you're an idiot. You're not listening to us. Like, he just disappeared. I did have two, good, two younger me. guys that did that. I mean, and I'm overlooking this shit. They just vanished. They really did. Like, come on. And then you turn around, he's in the cemetery. All right, so then fast forward. They get Boy, this gets really creepy. Then <laughs> there's like one before the other. I, I'll tell the good one. So, well, they're, just, <laughs> well, they're all good, man, I guess. This is just wigging me out. So... This past, uh, uh, well, well, two weeks ago, whatever. So I'm at the cemetery. I'm looking at this stupid fallen tree that's outside the gates, and I'm just videotaping it. And I'm done videotaping. Or, or oh, what, what's up? You're touching no, my no, mic. No, no, go ahead. You're like molesting my microphone. No, no, you're fine. I, you just said right. you couldn't hear anything. And right. yeah, okay. I can't hear anything, yeah. but you can. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's all that matters. So I, I, I'm done videotaping the stupid tree. I put the the tablet in my bag. And I look up, and, you know, there's Richie's coming by to say hi or something like that. And I reach down my bag to go get, like, a smoke or something. It's like 15 seconds. And I look up, and I'm like, what, is he hiding? 
I mean, he was looking right at me. I'm like, the guy don't know how to play the hiding game, He right? is disappearing. He, right. So I'm just like, I'm looking around the trees, and I'm like, and I look over at the cemetery, and, and there he is in the cemetery. How did he do this so quick? <laughs> yeah. Like, wait a minute. No, this ain't right. He has the secret of dematerialization. Now, I look on my video before I went to the bag. Remember, I just shut the camera off. <laughs> just put it in the bag. We're talking seconds. So I replay that video. In the background, he's in the cemetery the entire time. So whoever I saw was solid and real. No, it was it was Richie. <laughs> it was okay. he had the full yeah. blue jean jacket, full blue jean jacket. It was the classic Richie. He even had sunglasses on. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's talking to people in the cemetery. And those people vouched. They all looked at me like I was crazy. Like, dude, like, no, he's been here the whole time. Richie's gave me this famous spiel oh the human mind plays tricks does all sorts of funny things Uh uh-huh and then it hit me later on i'm like wait a minute this is where it got really creepy for me i'm like just about a week or so before not even a month uh before that happened with the rich event i was talking to somebody in the cemetery a couple came in through the gate i look over i realized they're just staring at me i thought maybe they recognized me from like youtube or something I look over and they're still staring. And I'm still engaged in conversation, but they came up with a head to interrupt. Like, sorry, but weren't you just on the path? Like, what? How did you get here so fast? How'd you get here before us? Mm. You were you were leaving. So you think and I'm like some... I'm like, I'm thinking, no, they just made a mistake. Like they're like, no, that's your bag. Now I have a military bag. It's not like something you can buy at Walmart. And they were so adamant. They were like, no, man, that, that, that had, it was you. It was you. It was you that kept repeating, no. And then they interrupted me like two other times, almost like a, like a gnat to me. Like, God, leave me alone. That wasn't me on the path. They're like, really? That wasn't you? I mean, to them, it, they were convinced it was me walking Possibly down the they path. were seeing you. Possibly, you know, possibly there's like something going on with time, a time warp here or well, something. Well, that's, that's the thing I've yeah. been sticking with for the long, for many this years. May, you, may, you, may be, you may be coming to some of the clues why some of the strange activities happening. Your in this perception cemetery. or whatever it is mm-hmm. of time yeah. is different there. Yeah. So now this, this past weekend, I'm out there just, you know, chilling on a, you know, whatever, doing whatever on, on a Saturday, just real quick. And the guy who does the Bachelor's Grove comic, you probably never met him yet. So he's out there, you know. And he, the Bachelor's and he, Grove comic. Yeah, it's a Marvel interaction thing going on these days. Anyway, yeah, I know. Hey, it's the Grove. I don't know what that is. So I don't know. I'm like, hey, how you doing, you know? And uh, so a, a group comes walking by, and they're like, you, do you know anything about the place? They asked him, and then he turns and says, uh, points to me and says, oh, there's your expert. Talk to him. Oh, boy, here we go. Well, and they asked me, like, what's, like, what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen here? And I'm you know, being, being honest. I'm like, well, I can't actually tell you. I go, maybe in 10, 20 years I'll tell you. Actually, it's, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I don't want to tell the story because I don't want people going out there for the wrong reasons. And eventually when yeah. I do tell the story, it's going to make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. But I go, but I can tell you about a really weird one that just happened a week ago, a week ago for me. And that's when I told them about the disappearing Richie thing. And the thing about me and everything I just told you. Well, this lady, I'm, I'm looking at the whole time, pretty much, because she just has this look on her face, and eventually her mouth just dropped, and she says... Uh, I had the same thing happen to me. <laughs> Is well, that what she says? She goes, my, uh, my mother and my godmother were coming to the Grove back around 2004 was the, how they calculated the math, how old she was at the mm-hmm. time and all this crap, right? And there was some dude, some old guy, just walking uh, toward the Ruby Woods as they were coming to the cemetery... I guess he tipped his hat, acknowledged, how you doing? And being girls, I mean, it happens a lot. I know I know how it is out there. You know, if you're like one guy and there's like two girls, they'll look behind them, you know, like you know, they're a little nervous, you know. But I guess they turned around after the guy walked past them and they didn't see the guy. Mm-hmm. And they, they're like, whoa, what, whatever, okay. But then they get to the cemetery and that same exact dude is in He's the there. cemetery. Yeah. You know, it's like a time thing. Whatever this is. I had... And now it's not even just, and that takes it one step further because you're interacting with it, whatever this is. Now, what if that dude was in another timeline? Yeah. What back. if he turned around and the girls disappeared? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, you know, I maybe I have one of those stories laying around, and I just got to revisit it and re- re- reread about, it and go, about, oh my god. About 17 years ago, I almost and I told you this story. I've, I've told everybody. I've made the story very public. About 17 years ago, I was actually on a ghost, someone else's ghost tour. 
Um, but I don't think they're even still in business anymore. It was called Nighty Night Ghost Tours. If they're still around, it was a nice little tour. But I knew who I was with them. And the young lady that was giving the tour, her name was Janine. So we brought the small group back there, and um, they're milling around by the tombstones and everything. And Gina and I go back to the, you know, by, by the creek sure. back there. And I sort of became disoriented. Been there many times. I know where everything is, but I could not find the foundations and the wells mm-hmm. back there. Could not find it. Two young guys. Hey, you guys know where the foundations are? In this? Oh, sure. They're right over here. Come on. We'll show you. Cross over the water. Go over there. Talk with them. Then I noticed that Janine's no longer with me. She left. She goes back to her group. I'm with the two guys. And we're just small talk, you know, weather, foundations, this kind of thing. We're talking about that and everything like that. And I sort of glanced away and glanced back, and they're not anywhere to be seen. Two guys. See, now that, but you didn't see them later, right? I did not see them later. See, now that's I ne- a common I thing I did not for me see them hear. at all. Besides the and, rich. And, and, and for my very first instinct was they're playing some sort of a gag right, on me. Right, right. They're playing a gag. And I'm looking around. Are they laying down somewhere? Are they hiding behind something? You know, did they shimmy up a tree this and maybe quickly? This is still Whatever the they did, kind of thing, nothing. But... I can't find how do you hear are these guys. And then afterwards, I started thinking it. You know, okay, they got bell bottoms on. They're in T-shirts just wearing. Everybody else has jackets. It's a cool day. Mm, something just didn't kind of click here like that. And then later on, I told Janine about this. And I said, do you think you could remember those guys? Yeah, she goes, and she says, what happened, Bob? And I told her, and she says, you know, I kind of, that's why I didn't go with you. I, I kind of sensed. She was, <laughs> she was like a little in tune that there was something just not right here. A heads up, you know? Yeah, she, yeah, but she goes back to her group, by the, and she leaves me with the guys, you know, now. But now, I don't what, know if this, was this a time warp type thing? What? I hope but I, never I run seen, into myself. i never seen these that guys That is going to be the ultimate. Wouldn't I will walk cool? up to myself. I will say hello. What what year are you in? This has happened before. There are there are things like this happening before where people claim to have seen a ghost, but the trouble is the ghost they're seeing is somebody that's still alive. Well, the, that's the, what a, this a, is. A very famous story was Mary Todd Lincoln herself. She, Mary Todd Lincoln, of course, who had all sorts of strange things and everything happened with her, and even more particularly so as she got older, she became very, very involved with spiritualism and the spirit the spiritualist movement and seances and mediums and contacting her dead sons, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so on and so on. After they moved into the White House, she claimed to go into the blue room and see the ghost of John Tyler kneeling down on one knee and facing one of the small sofas that was there. And the trouble with this was, well, John Tyler did propose to his second wife in the blue room. We know that because he said so himself. But the trouble is she claimed to see his ghost. He was still alive when she claimed to see his ghost. So is this another case of a time warp? I don't know. It, it's, got, just, it's got to be time related to yeah, some degree. Yeah, I think so too. I yeah. mean, to them, it's looking solid and real. Maybe this. Maybe this. I'll assume that's what. Maybe we're kind of getting into something here, and maybe this is going to explain some of the strange phenomena at the Astros Grove. Well, time has always been a fascinating. Maybe that house is in a time warp. Maybe some of these spirits that we see are in a time warp, and they're you know. Right. The yellow suit man. All these things that are all these occurrences that go on out there. You know. Out at the Grove, you mean? At the Grove. Well, yeah. I don't think it's all time. But the Grove, a lot of stuff that's been going on out there that are people are claiming to be ghostly, it seems to be more of a time aspect to it. Is it not reason... somewhat ghostly in and of itself? I know we're talking about you, two you different could things. You try saying that. We're talking about two different no, things No, this is here. like next level, man. This is but something is time much travel, more But is time intricate. travel not also something supernatural in and of itself? Well, if you can see and know the future, minutes, days, hours, weeks, you know, years ahead of time, I mean, there's something to be said for that. Well, we have a lot of people out okay. there who claim they can. Yeah. <laughs> so... You know, if you got experience with the time thing, I mean, th- this is like, hey, it's cool. Hey, you know, I got mm-hmm. another one of me just kind of walking around. But it really gives you something to think about. It would be interesting if, you, like you said, boy, that would be, I, I think it would almost be but that's a, a recent thing, too. A, a, a somewhat maddening thing to be able to see yourself. In a oh, I would mark. love it. I would absolutely love it. If it was me walking down the path or something, I, would, I wouldn't take my eyes off me. I'd walk right up and I'd say hello. <laughs> hey, Pete, would you like to meet Pete? <laughs> Knowing me, we would both converse until we probably disappeared. First thing we have to say is, what year is it? Have you ever died before? Oh, I know you've died before. I've, I've actually died three times on Facebook. <laughs> people, have, people have written this oh, about me. Part, yeah. Oh, yeah. People have written this about me. You know, you know, hey, you know, you remember Bob that used to live in Summit and all this kind of thing? And, you know, I don't see him anymore in his house. Somebody else moved into the house he lived in. We don't see him around town anymore. We don't see him work at Subway and all this. And then someone says, you know, I think he passed away. And another person says, yes, he did. He passed away. He died. And then I see this. I read it. And I go, wait a minute. So I read on Facebook and I put down, you know, I'm sorry to disappoint everybody, but I am still here. You know, I just happened to sell my home and move out to Elsip, you know. So that's why for three years you haven't seen me around town, you know. So far, <laughs> I, have, happened three I haven't times to me already. Dead. Actually, what yeah. was funny, one time I had to get some really annoying Bastards Grove fans off my back. I say fans ah. in a real sarcastic way. 
annoying. And they were just texting my phone and texting my phone and texting my phone. So I just I let it I just let it go bl- you know, blank for a few days and it just kept texting. And eventually I pretended like I was like my mom texting them back. Said I'm sorry I'm sorry to inform you that Peter passed away. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's one way and they that. actually <laughs> called the police department. Police were like, well, we can't tell you anything, even if he did. It's just we can't. Why That's would they it. call the police department to find out if I was really to dead? Find out in, in fact, if you were, <laughs> they were so convinced. <laughs> well, that was good. That's good. Yeah. Oh my god. Interesting stuff. Some good stuff came up here. Jeez. Let's see. Well, no, we got we kind of started a little late, so we're right about on time actually here. Any closing things, Paul? Anything? I'll save. I'll save. You always got stories to tell. Yeah. You've always got. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. Apparently, yeah. I even got more now. So. Well, you're a ghost too in that one photo. So. All the ghost adventures. Yeah, 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 a, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mr. John. <laughs> Thanks for thinking yeah. I'm a ghost. Yeah. Pizza in a ghost photo. Yeah. Someone took of him and they said it was a ghost. It's an infrared photo, photo, but it's just me bending it's, down it's looking Pete. at the, uh, some, something growing on a tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, yeah. Paul, thank you so much, sir. Oh, Enjoy yeah. meeting you, and thank you so much for coming on the oh, show. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah. You're welcome back fun. anytime you'd like to. Anytime you want to come back on, come on. Yeah, interesting stories there. I yeah, like that stuff. Like I think that. I'm just a one-trick pony, though. So, I thought. <laughs> no, no. Trust it's me, everybody, the grove. You ain't. Yeah. Everybody has something to tell. Yeah, everybody has something to tell. Interesting. I just find it really fascinating that you hung on to this yeah. robe thing all this time. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Disappears yeah. for a while. Yeah, for then Halloween comes back. Yeah, yeah uses your costume. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Um, We're to the Grove a few times. I don't know, though. Is, is, is this, the owner recognizes you. And is like, this activity still, right. But is this activity still going on out there that I, anyone knows? I would Pete s- may know this because he spends a little what, more time out there What, the satanic will be thing? Yeah, yeah. I think it's like cliche stuff probably now. Like The just, stuff that I knew that was going on has now died down because I reveal part of their identity. Ah. Because they okay. were not just harassing me, they were har- harassing others. Ah. And so is that a coincidence that it's died down now? Well... I think at one time it may have been actual authentic. There may Correct. have actual been I believe that. people out there actually worshiping and doing whatever, which, you know, okay, fine. There may have been authentic, but then I think maybe that story may have gotten a little exaggerated too, and maybe now it's just practical jokers and, well, not even practical jokers, but people trying to come across as yeah, this. Yeah, I think oh, they're like, 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 like animals out there cut up and covered in fake blood, you know. See, yeah, like, yeah. I used to see real animals covered up out there, you know, uh, cut up out there. One time, actually, a dog carcass. One time, two. Yeah, we, we, we had one, too. Because occasionally on, on I do little video, tours yeah. that I sponsor with some well, of the park districts. Wasn't the one of the coyotes, right? Dog no, dog? I didn't see coyotes. No, no, no. And um, one time I did go in there. Were like, I used to try to go out there like a couple days before I bring a group out. So if I did see anything, I would tell them, you know, just in case this might bother you. But, of course, now it's pretty cleaned up out there anyway. But a couple times there were like some pheasant carcasses nailed up the trees in there and yeah. things. And I there, got you know, pictures so. of that. Someone just recently um, spray-painted a lot of pentagrams. Yeah, I made Fox News in the morning. They were more interested in having the spray paint in the background than the headstones. Even the ladies in, in the studio were like, where are the headstones? Oh, don't you rather see the spray paint? Right. Yeah, they're showing the trees with the the um, yeah. spray painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think, too, like when we were someone, doing it. Someone, the Mr. Rippets stone that's laying down there flat. But you can smell that shit, Someone kids. spray painted on that, yeah. yeah. You know, one time yeah. I left the cemetery, I not even for five minutes, came back. And there's all the spray paint, and there's a group of kids. I I'm wish like, they wouldn't do that. I really I, so I walked up, I'm like, so where's the can? And they were just so scared, shaking, like, yeah. I know, yeah, I, I know, know it's who you. you are. I know it's yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Knock it off. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a shame. Go to these cemeteries, visit them, experience the paranormal, experience whatever it is you choose to experience, but please do not vandalize the cemeteries. Yeah, yeah always remember, these are someone's, you know, even the people are long gone or whatever, but this was once someone's father, mother, Brother, sister, loved one, you know, don't, you don't want to Sacred do that. Sacred ground. Yeah, you, know. you don't want to do those kind of things, you know. Go over there. Or you can take it next level. Now you don't go after rope people. We'll go after the spray painters. Yeah. I hold them down. You spray paint them <laughs> with their own can. <laughs> <laughs> spray, spray paint a pentagram but on their we, back or nice. something. You know? throw them in the pond to wash them off. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> if I fell in that thing, I would just drown myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. That thing's icky, isn't it? You know, that's that's one of the stories I've sort of, I don't know how you feel about this, Pete, but I, I as of late, you know, of course, every October when you're there a lot and when I do these talks and things and this the subject always comes up. Um, people always ask about, oh, you know, the Capone mobsters dropping bodies off in the pond. And I I don't, I don't, I don't think that ever was. I don't. Because number one, for them to drive all the way from the city or wherever to to drop bodies off way out there, uh, there would have been a lot more. If that was a thing, the Schmidt family would have known about it. Well, I've talked to the Schmitts. Well, not only that, but also to that pond isn't that deep. 
if you're looking for a spot to conceal a body, I don't think that'd be the most that'd be a really spot. dumb place. Because that's opinion. it would yeah, exactly yeah. because it's not that deep, and plus people have been in there and things, and there's no, nothing's ever turned up. So yeah. I, I think that might have just been a nice little story that somebody started, but I don't think there's any truth to it. I really don't. That's you know? the mob stuff. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I don't think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Until next time. Until next time. Yeah. Thank you, Pete, for coming on again. Paul, thank you so much. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. You're yeah. very welcome. Yeah. yeah, nice meeting you, and thank you for your stories. Interesting. Oh, yeah. like that a lot. John, you're going to take us out there? Uh, folks, thank you so much for listening to Paranormal Radio. And don't forget to listen to all the other shows on the Winning City Network. Meet the Chicago Historians, Donna Sports, Chicago Junction, the Armchair Experts, Wealth and Wisdom. Catch the show on Jack FM 89.7 WRHS out here in Norwich, sort of a local station out here. Uh, we will be on on Halloween there at about 10 o'clock in the morning. And then also, too, on YouTube, Paranormal Radio, YouTube, Bob Trazik. Shows all pop up. And Windy City Network, www.windycityhometown.com. And they'll pop up. Everyone have a wonderful Halloween season. We'll see you all back on in November with, I'm not certain who. we got a couple of people in line for the November show. But we'll see you all then. In the meantime, everyone have a wonderful Halloween, a safe Halloween. And we'll see you then. And thank you so much, folks, for listening. Have a wonderful evening and a great autumn. You have been listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek from the John Levitt Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack O'Lantern 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich. Paranormal Radio was directed by John DeVita, and our special thanks to the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chaconda, and the executive uh, station manager of WRHS FM, Mr. Kevin Zeflick. This broadcast was pre recorded on Monday, October the 29th, the year 2018. Until next time, friends, please be safe and thanks for listening. And this is Jack O'Lantern, 89.7 WRHS-FM, Norwich, Illinois.